You are listening to selfdiscoverymedia.com, where illumination and inspiration is but a click away. With so many genre topics for you on everything that you need to know in life, we celebrate and share the people who have taken the journey before you and who are now here to serve you with their wisdom and their knowledge. The next show coming up is... Good morning, good afternoon, gang. Good evening, everybody. Welcome back to another edition of Sarah's View of Life. I am Sarah Troy, right here on selfdiscoverymedia.com. Well, I have just turned 65. I am now officially a senior. This means free ferry back and forth from Victoria Island to the mainland and a few other perks. But of course, it also means getting older. Do we fear getting older or do we embrace it? I've decided to embrace it. The 65 number doesn't scare me. I was 64 just the other day. It's um, what it represents, being a senior. Well, does that mean being wiser? Does that mean it's just the perks? Does that mean old age? It can mean everything, can't it? And I think a lot of it is, is how our attitude is. So I have just come back from the UK and my show next week will be on my trip to the UK and things that I did and saw experiences and photos, etc. of that. <clears throat> but this week, it's about the turning of age. <laughs> when we're growing up, you know, when I grew up, it was about you want to turn 21. That meant you got the key to the door. 21 was a big deal. But for me, it was 16. My life changed at 16 in the sense that I left school, went to work, started living. So 21, I was already traveled and had already done so many things in life. But there were always these milestones that we looked forward to. Uh, 21 and then 25 and remember turning 25 and it's like you were an old woman by that time because you weren't married, you were spinster. <clears throat> Again, all these labels that we like to put on everything. But everything is a state of mind, isn't it? Everything is perspective. Where are you at what age in life doing what? We can measure it by have we been proactive? Have we stepped up to explore? Have we become what we're meant to become in life? And I think this is how we really need to look at life rather than I'm this age or that age. 65 for me, not only the free fairy, but you know, it's, it's a mark of, yes, I'm a senior. I'm going gray. You can see the solver. Um, embracing the old age, I consider it a gift. My dad died at 45 and um, my mom, 95. So, you know, she had a good long life. But there's a lot of people that lose their lives very, very young. So I look at every year as a, as a beautiful gift. I have life challenges. I've shared that before. I've got fibromyalgia and all the umbrella that goes underneath that. And my trip away was rather exhausting and I've had to take some time to kind of regroup and, and just get myself back into sync again. But part of that is the age. Part of that is the, the condition that I'm in. But also part of it is knowing when to step back. I have come back home. I've been away pretty well, three and a half weeks. And Although I gave you shows while we were away and made sure I'd set that all up. I haven't been proactive in doing interviews. I've just done one with uh, beautiful Ali uh, Villanueva um, on poison, uh, the new medicine. And uh, you know, the process of allowing your life to unravel, allowing you to look at your life from the inside out, allowing your heart and soul to reveal who you are, what you're meant to be here to do, your, your proactiveness in your own life. And it's her journey of what she discovered herself. So that was also on this week. You'll find it under mental, mental health awareness. But that was my first show in a while. And I have to say, I'm, I'm, you know, I really want to do more shows. Yes, absolutely. I love interviewing people, but I'm not rushing back into things. I've decided just to take a little time for me that there's something tapping me on the shoulder and, and it's the direction that I'm meant to go in. And I have really want to promote the self discovery community and get a book out there and obviously do more here on self discovery media. 
But also part of me is saying, Sarah, you are overdue for a book, your book, you need to finish your book. And so it's, do I listen to that and, and take the next few months off just doing some interviews, but not projecting or going any further with the business and write this book? And, or do I go and do the other? And so at the present moment, I'm stepping into my 65 year old wisdom and allowing whatever needs to be to come to me. I don't have to be in a rush to do anything. This is one thing we learn as we get older. Yeah, some people say, but you're getting older, the time is running out. You need to rush to do the things on your bucket list. If I accomplish the things on my bucket list, hallelujah. But what I have to look at is things I've already accomplished. And I have some objectives that I still want to do. But I also know that they will get done when the time is right. Because that's something you learn as you get older, when you've taken that journey of self, when you've decided to embrace who you really are and what you're here to do. You allow life to redirect you or, or to just nudge you along a certain um, avenue. So the avenue that I'm being directed on right now is, Sarah, nurture yourself. Take a little time to regroup, rejuvenate. We have got our Thanksgiving this last week, so I'm obviously pre-recording this show. And it's a lot of perspective. You know, um, being over in England, which I will cover next week, there's the whole Brexit thing going on. And then, of course, back here in North America, we have the whole Trump impeachment. And, of course, here in Canada, we have our own um, political party uh, election going on. And it was so easy to get caught up in the hysteria, especially as my sister eats, drinks and, and sleeps Brexit. And I found myself getting so wound up and, and not liking how I felt, not liking this intensity, even to the point of shaking. And it was like, whoa, I don't want to be a part of that world, that part of that world where it gets so immersed in something, but you lose yourself along the way. So taking a step back and, and taking everything in right now, allowing life to happen, is going to put me on the path that I need to go right now without having to rush or I've got to get it done. No, 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 no deadlines. No, no deadlines. I will do what I need to do when I need to do it in the way that I can do it uh, and should do it. And that is the way it is. So all these wonderful shows that you get from me are paced at my own level of what my hosts do. I have a couple of hosts that are not being very active right now due to circumstances in their lives and i'll re be reviewing that as well we've got 2500 shows here for you on self-discovery media and so the wisdom does not die it's just in the library so while i'm looking at what is my next step is it a book um is it pursuing the um the community is it both, which I could actually be doing both at the same time, preparing one while immersed in the other. But I have to say, kind of the book is pushing me. Everybody's been saying to me for so long, Sarah, where's your book? You should write a book. Well, I do these shows every week where I kind of share my perspectives and things. And, and a lot of it's in there. And I do a lot of article writing and blogging. But maybe it's a time to pull it all together and kind of just put out that book for anyone who's interested on Sarah, Sarah Troy. Who is she? Why, why does she do what she does? Why is it so important to her? What's her perspective on life, the journey that I've taken to get here for anybody who's interested in reading it or audioing it. So who knows what I'm going to be doing, but I know that this is the time to pause, um, reflect, you know, on the last 65 years of my life or 64 and, and Look at what I do want to accomplish still, but it doesn't all have to be done today. So I had a wonderful birthday with my son and his girlfriend, Rebecca, Tyler and Rebecca, and my daughter and her husband, Tasha and Rob, and my friend Cindy that came out and all the Bernie kids and their prospective partners. We went out for a fabulous Chinese uh, vegan meal, Pokon on Kingsway in Vancouver, highly recommended, delicious so filling dying for chinese because when you're on your own you cannot get that multiple choice that you can get when you can go out as a party and my son bought me a fitbit to keep measuring my fitness and my health and my sleep and um 
I had breakfast with them a couple of times and worked a little bit at the restaurant because I can't sit by and do nothing. And uh, lovely hugs from the dogs, his dogs, uh, Minka, Abby and Gus. And uh, lots of love from there and uh, lots of um, care from Rebecca because I stayed with Rebecca and Tyler. And it is, uh, I always enjoy doing that, getting puppy love and just enjoying time with the two of them and then going down to the restaurant, pitching in if I can. And just always good food, always good food there. And his restaurant is Humble Roots Cafe in Maple Ridge, uh, down 224th Street. <coughs> and it is sponsor, he sponsors these shows. So a lot to be grateful for, you know, a, a lot of good things ahead of me. And I think it's just time to take a breath. You know, I'm looking out at autumn here right now. There's some beautiful, colorful trees, beautiful greens turning into yellows, some wonderful oranges and yellows and greens over there. And just as autumn, you know, gently nudges us and warms us and invites us, just take the journey and just see how everything goes. So books tapping me, the community thing is tapping me. We'll see which way I go. I've got lovely more shows coming to you. Some wonderful people coming up in the future. I'm just going to do it when I feel like doing it and bring you those wonderful people. As I said, there's an Orchard of Wisdom library here of people, 18 genres. So much for you to choose from. So me not bringing you current shows right now is not letting you down. It's just giving you a chance to look at the library and see who we have there. And you have two shows this week, mine and uh, mental health. And, uh, and there's more to come. So don't be afraid of getting older. You know, as I said, it's a gift in this world of, of so much death and so much suffering. And be appreciative of what you have and not what you have not. I've still got some things I want to have a home, etc., And I will work for that. Um, but in the meantime, it's in the now. We appreciate what we have now, who we are now, um, where, what opportunities we have in front of us. I know turning 65 and living on a pension for many people is scary because the pensions are so low and the cost of living is so high. Um, all we have to do is just do what we can and pick up the odd jobs in my case continue to keep on interviewing and just believe that the there is something there and work towards it and just keep that positivity so who knows what my 65th year is going to have in store for me i will be working to bring you more shows I will be working for the selfdiscoverycommunity.org to get ignited with this first book. I will be writing my book. And in what order, I don't know, but it is going to come. So as I am now this official senior, which means cheaper bus passes, as I said, free ferry and discounts at various places, I'm going to capitalize on it. Why not? And also appreciate the fact that I've been given a gift of another year. Another year to create, another year to follow opportunities, to create opportunities, another year to build this wonderful orchard of wisdom. And I thank everyone for all the wonderful birthday wishes I got. I counted or I lost count at 250 on Facebook and LinkedIn. And I thank you all so much for your blessings and for your kindness. It means a lot to me that do you remember who I am or know who I am? And to take the time out to wish me a happy birthday, I appreciate that. Thank you so much. So stay tuned. Who knows what's coming next week? It will be on England and all the wonderful places I went and photographs shared. I went over there to have a, my birthday celebration and my brother who is turning 70, my sister turned 78, and we did some wonderful things together. And when we could drop the subject of Brexit, we had a good time. <laughs> And England, London, has changed quite a lot. And uh, it's in a very unsure place right now. And so, you know, everywhere in the world is unsure, isn't it? There's so many threats. I think if each one of us, <laughs> each one of us on this planet, decide to feed kindness and love for one day, kindness and love, no hate, 
no revenge, no war, no fear-mongering, no greed, no opulence, no entitlement, but fed kindness, caring, compassion, love, sharing, possibilities, opportunities. If we did that, all of us, every single human being on this planet for one day, you would see an elevation of energy like you've never seen before. But until that one day comes, let's raise our own good vibrations. Let us choose to look at life in a positive way. However negative things are out there being bombarded at us, let us look at what we can feed, what we can grow, what we can contribute to, what we can become, who we can help, who we can inspire and enable and invite. And look to all that the good that we can do, rather than being bombarded by the negative and being told what we can't. Because ultimately, folks, it is up to us. What we put out is what we get back. So feed the possibilities and you'll be surprised of what comes back. So thank you for all the birthday, birthday wishes and the gift of love that you gave me. And who knows what 65 is going to bring, but I'm open and willing to embrace it and get going when I've got the clear direction in which direction I'm going to go. So uh, thank you to all of you for the kindness and your love. Don't be afraid to embrace your age. Don't. It is a gift. And just look at what you can do now. Maybe you've slowed down. Maybe health ain't so good. Maybe you're retiring. What can you do now with your life, right? Even if you're struggling, what can you do to make those struggles less? Don't feed the struggle. Feed the solution. Look for them. They're there. They're out there somewhere. We've just got to be open and willing to receive them. So until next time, folks, bye for now. We hope that you enjoyed the show and were inspired to come and visit us at selfdiscoverymedia.com and see what other shows we have for you. And please do visit our selfdiscoverycommunity.org and see how you can be a part of giving back. Thank you very much.